One square kilometer of red rock in the middle of the North Sea. This is Heligoland, Germany's only high seas island. Enjoying nature, letting the wind blow all around you and relaxing. That's what many people who come here want. Me too. The journey from Hamburg to Heligoland takes three and a half hours. A catamaran takes me there. No other boat is faster. All the passengers initially have the same route. Everybody passes the colorful lobster huts and walks along the promenade. Somewhere here is my hotel. Most of the tourists who arrive here go back in the afternoon. There are more or less 3,000 visitors here every day. But I would like to stay overnight so I have more time and no stress to discover this small island. I check in. And my first walk takes me into the countryside. All the way up to the Oberland. A route along the edge of the rock that forms Heligoland leads around the island. The cliff path. Water, water as far as the eye can see. The mainland is 50 kilometers away. I pass the Lange Anna, the tall Anna. This freestanding rock is the landmark of Heligoland. Everybody hopes that it can withstand the wind and the waves for a long time. And I continue to Germany's smallest nature reserve, the Lummenfelsen, the rock of the Guillemots. It is the nesting ground of many seabirds, but it is named after the Guillemot. In June, these small feather balls take wing. Amateur photographers wait for them to take their courageous plunge. There are not many places in Europe where you can get so close to wildlife. Although this island is very small, it has an incredibly eventful history. You can learn more about it in the Heligoland Museum. Jörg Andres is the boss here. He tells me that this island used to be a pirate's nest, a navy fort and a trading post. In the early 18th century, it was just as important as the international port of Hamburg is today. Heligoland was once part of Denmark, then of Great Britain. It was not until 1890 that the island became German, a fiercely contested piece of ground. When was the most dramatic moment in the history of the island? The most dramatic moment was definitely the end of World War II and the Great Bombardment. Everybody had to be evacuated. And then came the Big Bang in April 1947, resulting in the complete destruction of the island's buildings. The British occupying forces once tried to destroy all the island's military facilities with 6.7 kilotons of explosives. Never again should it be used for military purposes. For many years, Heligoland remained uninhabitable. In 1954, the population began returning to the island and tourism started up here again right off. First they slept in tents in Duna, because there was no place at all to stay here in the island. There were no houses or anything. So they stayed in little tents on Duna and stand sold whatever they needed. You could pass through and buy little souvenirs and people came in droves to see Heligoland again. Soon tourists came in masses, not for the beautiful nature, but to buy duty-free liquor and cigarettes. How did the island endure this? I just imagine 10 or 12,000 visitors here on this really small island. It was terrible, I must say. There was no room between all the people. They were just herded past the shops and through here, shoulder to shoulder. You might see something nice in one of the shops, but you didn't stand a chance of getting to it to buy it. You were just pushed on ahead by the crowds until you ended up back at the ship and had to sail home again. How come prices are so cheap on Heligoland? 
That's a privilege we had from our time with Britain, and it's been preserved through all the changes in rule. It was taken on in the treaties, and so we've always had our duty and tax-free status here. It still exists, but today the tourists arrive here because of nature. Almost as it used to be when Heligoland became a seaside resort in the early 19th century. At first, people came here because of the good air. It was the beginning of Heligoland's tourism. That's the cue for me to look around for a souvenir. This will fly from my balcony. There's only one main shopping street, the Lung Wei. It has one duty-free shop after the next. The lobster huts by the harbor are a good place for a snack. These used to be warehouses for the fishermen. Today, restaurants have moved in. They mainly offer seafood dishes. It looks mighty tasty. Walking through the streets here, you might be surprised that all the houses look almost alike. That's because after World War II, Heligoland's town was rebuilt as a planned community. An architect's competition was announced for the reconstruction in 1951. Over a thousand architects took part. Their task was to make the optimum use of the limited space while orienting the houses favorably to the sun and wind. Every detail was thought out, down to the color of paint. Today's Heligoland is like an open-air museum of the 1950s and 60s building style. Almost 1,500 people live on Heligoland. Most of them have ancestors who were sailors or fishermen, maybe even pirates. Sea shanties and sailor songs are part of the cultural heritage. I am here for a rehearsal of the Helgolenda Kakfinken Shanty Choir. The song you just sang, was that a regular sailor song or a shanty? No, that was actually our theme song. It has nothing to do with either. It was in Halunda, the Frisian dialect. And it just means the Karkfinken are great guys, no more than that. There are shanties and sailor songs. What's the difference? Sailor songs are simply romantic songs they used to sing. But the shanties were the work songs for the seamen of earlier times. It was hard work on the ships. One of them would call the tune and the jobs, and the choir would answer and do the work. The lead singer never had to work, and it's just the same with us. Who's the lead singer? Today the lead singer is Rolf. He sings the Song of Hope. Can I sing a shanty like that? Sure, we can do that. Like I said, the lead singer is Rolf, he'll sing the beginning. And when we jump in, you can just sing along. It's a long time ago. It's a long time, long time, very long time. It's a long time ago. It's a long time, long time, very long time. It's a long time ago. They put late name time meal to let's go my way. Hey ho! It's a long time ago. It's a long time, long time, very long time. It's a long time ago. It's a long time, long time, very long time. It's a long time ago. That was really good. Those who really want to join the Kakfinken have to meet three conditions. Be a man, live on Heligoland and be able to sing. They have strict rules, but they are friendly guys.
It's evening on Heligoland. I am on the cliff path again. The best place to wait for the sunset. You can only experience that when you stay here overnight. A day trip is nice, but it's even better to stay two or three days on the island. That makes a real difference, because then you can experience the perfect deceleration. So just give it a try. Bye bye, see you next time somewhere else in Germany.